What's a good internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome back to Wrestling Revolution 3D on the PC on Steam for what should be at least for a good long while the final episode of this video series tomorrow. Got something a little bit different in the 5 p.m. slot, and after that, obviously, Friday is the impending 2K18, and obviously, plenty of that coverage on this channel. So, let's see if today I can end this series for the time being, as the World Heavyweight Champion. So Cowboy- Oh no! Jeff Jarrett, the special guest referee. He's gonna screw me, isn't he? Slap nuts. That's not cool. That's not cool, Double J. Ain't I great? I'm the champion. Ain't I great? Anyway, welcome to a fine Wednesday on this show. We got some, uh, well, there is kind of one news story right now before I even get into dis discussing what happened on SmackDown last night. There's kind of one news story, and that news story is the former king of the cruiserweights, Neville, may or may not have walked out of the company on Monday at Raw. Uh, there's a lot of conflicting information going on at the moment, uh, and this match gets underway. I need to actually get rid of this belt, because if I don't, uh, I might accidentally use it, and that happened before, and I got myself dis disqualified. But also... Why is Jeff Jarrett the ref? Uh, and there was no promo for it. There was no... anything. Alright, so the story is, or as the story goes, the or, the original plan for Raw was to have Neville versus Enzo in that cruiserweight main event uh, at the end of Raw. But obviously, it didn't happen. We had Kalisto, and he won the belt. So, Neville, uh, from what I hear, was supposed to lose that match. And apparently he walked out, don't know if that was part of the discussion, uh, as to why, because he, he didn't want to lose to Enzo. Uh, I feel like they realized, oh wait, we can't have Neville challenge for the belt because we, we wrote ourselves into a corner with that thing of the whole, can't touch me if you do, no more shots for you ever clause. Like, they kind of got themselves written into a corner. And you could see a reality where, nice, where having Kalisto win the belt would void that clause in Enzo's uh, contract. That makes a lot of sense in terms of the rest of that division all attacking Enzo and them all, and them all not being able to get shots at his belt. Like, that makes a lot of sense to put the belt off him, even for a short period, would null and void that clause. But how much of that, if any, plays into Neville leaving, or if perhaps he wanted to, you know, perhaps after having carried that division as the king for, like, nine months, um, and, like, what else would there be for him to do in that division, perhaps wanting to move back up to the main roster, uh, and they were like, nah, sorry, sorry, Neville, no main roster for you, then he was like, you know what, screw it, I'm, I'm just gonna leave, uh, that would not surprise me, uh, but maybe it was a similar thing to an Austin Aries situation, we don't know, because right now, there are sources saying that, um, crap, I want to do my Slug Buster! Slug Buster! Um, kudos to the comment section for, su for suggesting Slug Buster. Um, always, always give credit where credit is due. Um, what was I going to say? I lost my, my uh, perhaps it was an Austin Aries type situation of just being banged up and not getting what he wanted and just saying, you know what, I'm, I just don't, I, I, I don't need this anymore. Um, but again, it's, he, there, there are sources saying that, you know, he walked out, but then the, Jeff Jarrett, what is that flare bump? Um, but then there are the sources that were contacted with, within WWE who are saying, no, he's, he's fine, he's not going anywhere. Uh, but much like, much like the CM Punk situation, much like the Ryback situation, much like the Aries situation, he's just wasn't on TV and wasn't mentioned at all. And that's always a little bit telling when they just don't mention your name at all when you were such a major part of that thing a week prior. So that's a little curious. That's a little curious. Um, but again, this is early days here and we, we don't know the act. Don't, the wrong way, moron. Get back in the ring. Jeff Jarrett, punch him in the face. Woo! Boot to the face. That, that was a bro kick off the top rope. Just pretty good. But James Storm here being resilient and not wanting to give 
of this championship opportunity. So I'll be curious, like, if he wants to leave and they don't grant him his release, like, say, a Daniel Bryan, where they won't let him out of his contract uh, until he finishes it, or if he's got, you know, the standard 90-day clause, whatever else, which I, I think is what the, the, the thing right now with Austin Aries is that he's under that 90-day bit of business that they always do. Um, and, yeah, whether or not they grant him his release is kind of the biggest uh, question right now. So, in, in, in any event, Neville could certainly do, do some good business in New Japan. Definitely. Uh, I could certainly see that happening. Would be great. So, here's hoping. Here's hoping. German. And a pinfall. One. Two. What is that one count business, James Storm? You've been hit with multiple finishers, and you still just will not give up. The tenacity, the grit, the determination. I better not get screwed like that I did in that match with the, with the Blue Meanie yesterday. Where he hit like two moves, I had full health, and I got pinfall. Like, that was clearly a setup. I ain't looking to get set up, James Storm. I ain't looking for it. Not happening. Deal with it. Woo! Anyway, that's the Neville scenario. That's the Neville level. Um, and what's going on there. So let's get on to SmackDown here, because that's obviously also a thing that happened yesterday. And is potentially worth discussing. Uh, what happened there? Uh, Brizongo. We're on TV in a match. For the first time in, I feel like, for a, a, a long time. Um, in a Fatal 4-Way tag match to determine who was going to be the new number one contender for the Usos. Because, I guess, the Usos and the New Day, there is an Us truce, as they put it. A truce Us. Or, Springboard! What was that? Did he catch me into an RKO? Did that, that seriously happen? I can't even tell. Such a cluster. Um, now, the unfortunate thing here is that Brizongo were on TV in a match. But they promised us at uh, Hell in a Cell we were going to get Fashion Files. We were going to get Pulp Fashion. And that didn't happen. So perhaps next week we get Pulp Fashion. Because uh, I was looking forward to it. And it just didn't happen. So, unfortunate. That that was the case, but what are you gonna? Oh, reverse the monkey hook into a into a mounted punching deal. What is happening in this match? Why is it taking so long to put away James Storm one on one for a title? I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, yeah. So happy to see Br Brizongo actually wrestling again. That was pretty good. Um, but no, where's Pulp Fashion? Missing in action. Perhaps it just got cut for time because that that, that happens on these shows, especially on SmackDown being a two-hour show, things get cut for time. It happens. We had our Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens deal, explaining why Sami, why? What happened at Hell in a Cell? Why did he save his enemy and also former best friend uh, Kevin Owens and whatnot? And like any good heel turn, we had a justified explanation. We had prior weeks of build-up justifying just why he did what he did, and that's what any good heel does. Any good heel, if you listen to what he's saying, makes sense. But the way he goes about doing it makes him seem like a scumbag. That's usually good heel work. So, uh, it kind of... Oh no! Mickey James! Biscuit butt! Uh, what is happening here? Why is Mickey James in the building? All these... All these TNA alumni here. Jeff Jarrett, Mickey James, James Storm. Why are you interfering... Mickey James. But whose side is she on? Apparently apparently mine. Biscuit butt. Uh anyway, yeah, so uh it did kind of answer the the question that I had, which was will they give Sami Zayn a heel theme? And the answer so far is seemingly not yet. Um and I argued the point on Twitter that he needs a heel theme because right now his theme is just way, way, way too happy and fans want to sing along with it. But having seen his entrance on SmackDown, uh, I can certainly make the argument that, man, having him c come out and just be really sarcastic about it is also really funny. Like, having him have the same theme song, but just very sarcastic in his entrance and how he treats the audience that used to cheer for him is pretty good. So, either way, uh, hopefully this, this just means more 
screen time and more matches and more attention. The Iron Sheik! Break your back and make you humble! What is this? What is this match? This is like an Attitude Era, just interference after interference type deal. One. Two. Oh, Sheiky, baby. Sheiky. Get out of here, Sheik. Get out of here, Sheik. You don't want none. You don't want none, old man. That's what I thought. Springboard to nothing. Again. Why? Why? Mickey James, get in there and deal with the Sheik. Old country way. Uh, um... Just body slam and a pinfall. One. Two. I was gonna say, the worst ending of any match, but no. Uh, it was not. And now I gotta deal with Sheik. Get out of here, Sheik! What are you doing? This ain't your fight, Sheik. Go deal with Mickey James. Attack slug! Body slam! <sighs> anyway. Moving on. This match is gonna end... No contest. C clearly. Clearly! It's gonna end no contest. Because James Storm will not stay down for anything. I don't understand why. Take over. Um, yeah, so, speaking of Brizongo, speaking of SmackDown, speaking of things that were perhaps expected but unexpected, I guess, um, we have the on TV return of Harper and Rowan. Uh, and they are now the Bludgeon Brothers. Uh, and they have giant hammers. And I'm just like, why do they have giant hammers? What is... No, I am barely... I have taken almost no damage this whole match. You cannot do this to me, uh, video game. I'm sorry, you can't. I'm not gonna let you. I'd rather have time run out than this crap. Um... So yeah, we're just gonna ignore that Harper and Rowan totally sp sp split up like six months ago. And we're having matches like six six months ago, and that you had Harper in some kind of a singles run where he split from Bray and split from Randy when he was in the Wyatt. So we're going to ignore all that. We're going to press reset. We're going to give them some hammers and call them the Bludgeon Brothers. But, but on the bright side, you can totally make that connection. Bludgeon Brothers B B. That's two B. It's two B. Anyway. Uh, whether or not they trash Brizongo's office, we'll find out. That that was one of my things when they were teasing t two B. I was like two beards, two B. But no, Bludgeon. That's such like an '80s like tag team name. But sure, whatever. Uh, if anyone can make it work, hopefully they they can make it work. But in any event, I'm gonna win this match by draw, by time limit draw, because James Storm, he don't want none. He don't want none. Keep on. Keep on keeping on, James Storm. Deal with Mickey James. And, uh, there's 38 seconds left. Anyway, moving on. Alright, so I, I I didn't mention this when it happened the first time, which I guess was, was at, at Hell in the Cell. Dolph Ziggler. Uh, his, his no entrance stuff, right? Actually having, like, they play his theme for, like, a 10 seconds, or whatever, and then they do the record scratch, which... To me, in kayfabe, means that everyone's music is being played with vinyl, which is weird. Um, and that's just kind of one of those things, like, I, I understand that the the accepted way to do a thing where you interrupt music is having a record scratch. But unless you're a hipster in 2017, no one's playing their music on vinyl. Come on now. And I'm certainly not going to believe that... WWE uh, production staff is playing entrance themes on vinyl. Come on. Like, I get it as an audio cue. It connects with a certain segment of the audience. But how many kids out there, like in your prime demographic, how many of those people in that demographic actually know what a vinyl record is? Come on. I know, I know, semantics. But still, like, just a little bit of logic in there. Eric Rowan, who is a bludgeon brother... Uh, has renewed his contract. And the Yeti recovered from his injury from me yesterday. And then, of course, you also had uh, Baron Corbin pinning AJ Styles clean in the main event. And I'm like, okay, then where does AJ go from here? And where does Baron go from here? I'll be curious to find out. But also on the show, 
uh, no gender, which was weird. I am totally going to use this, uh, what? War games, folks. I was gonna skip, I was gonna have this match skipped, but now we got two ranks. And my opponent, upcoming at the pay-per-view was Taz, and I have Taz as a tag partner? How will they coexist? How will they coexist? And it's Abyss and... Beer. Money. No, it's probably rude. It's Glorious and it's Abyss. The Glorious Abyss. So yeah, I'm curious to see who, who, who they set as their next uh, opponent for gender for the world title. Abyss. I'm sure you're very excited to be standing in the ring with a champion like me. But we both know that you don't belong here, so there's no point in making this match for the title. It's a tag team match. Obviously you don't. Obviously you don't. Think of yourself as my sparring partner, and perhaps you'll benefit from the experience that I'm offering you. Don't patronize me, Attack Slug. We both know why you're scared to put that t title on the line. What's happening? I can't see anything. Taz, help me out. Help me out, Taz. This is weird. This is weird. But uh, I gotta make up for that long match previously. With a short match, hopefully, because I don't have time. Oh no, I got disqualified. I used the belt, apparently. And now I'm just gonna leave. I didn't... Belt's still on my, on, on my waist. So how was I disqualified in that at all? Also, it's non-title. Also, who cares? Oh, they won. Because of course they won. Whatever. Who cares? So to answer the question of how uh, how will Attack Slug and Taz coexist, they didn't. We don't. Sorry, Taz. Ian Collins, who I can only assume was the referee, injured his neck and will be out of action for four weeks. I don't know who that is. Paul Heyman left AAW to go to Federation Online. Sid Justice and Ray Scarlett, the new tag team champions. Bubba Ray Dudley left UKW for AAW. Devon is sad, because of course he is. Duel the Butcher renewed his contract. Mickey James got released. She interfered and got released. Good job, Biscuit Butt. Rey Mysterio, the most popular wrestler in Maple Leaf Grappling. What? Hey, Attack Slug. I convinced Steph to discuss bringing you back. Bringing me back to all American wrestling. First of all, it was Brock's idea that I was going to leave. And now Austin, who didn't want to be my, my tag partner anymore, wants to bring me back. All I want for 14 weeks, I don't want that. I want guaranteed creative. That's all I want. Give me creative. Increase my salary. Otherwise, there we go. We have a deal. Sorry, Taz. That's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. Sorry. What? And then just like that. I'm back, baby, which means, how about you give me a shot? First of all, I'm the champion, right? I'm the champion leaving, all right? Bringing the belt with me, taking that belt, and tossing it in the trash can. No, 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 Steph, no, 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 no. I have guaranteed creative. You've got nothing. Whatever dumb name, King Sin, you have, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what name you have, because I just signed a deal with creative Control, peace out, bye bye so long. Listen, Luke Harper, the other bludgeon brother, thinks he owns this place. Has been giving a lot of people a hard time. Is this the ball, Dean Ambrose? I, I, th I think it is. Would you consider taking him out for us? There's $16,000 in it for you if you do. Sure, I'll teach Luke Harper a lesson. Thanks. Thanks for the... Why does Dean Ambrose care? All right, non-title. Am I still champion of UKW? Or no, I, I'm sorry. Harper is still... Oh, no! Both Bludgeon Brothers are here. I didn't expect that to... No, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. Nah, I have a bat. Now what, Harper? Now what, Rowan? Now what? Now who's going to get bludgeoned? Now who's going to get... Oh, both men. Now who gets the bludgeoning? Huh? I want that title. I, I'm still mad about the fact that we no longer have, uh, what were we called again? I win. I win. I win. Um, the chopping block. I'm still mad and salty about the chopping block, Harper. And also the fact that, 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 that Harper should de definitely have gotten a singles push and not more tag team stuff with Rowan. Anyway. 
Anyway, we leave it on a cliffhanger. We leave this show on a cliffhanger because I have a Planks match. I don't know what a Planks match is against Brock Lesnar. And maybe at some point in time, maybe like January, I come back and look at this game a little bit more. But as you know, 2K18, impending, very soon. Tomorrow, something a little bit different. But then Friday, obviously, we begin the deluge. So prepare yourselves for the deluge of 2K18 content. I'm a tax lug. More videos every day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, right here on this channel. And I'm out!